Hello, I'm Dave Moats, and welcome to Successful Farming. On today's program, I'm heading to sale to see what high capacity grain carts are worth these days. And then we feature a farmer innovative tiling machine. Jolene Brown discusses the potential pitfalls of hiring family members for your farm. And then after these brief messages, our product test team of farmer evaluators report on new tool innovations. So please stay tuned. Milwaukee has surprised us again with a more powerful impact wrench, and this has been one of numerous advances that they've introduced. This is their high torque 276320. I sent it out to Rezac Land and Cattle Company, and Todd, you've evaluated Milwaukee tools for us before. You've had torque wrenches before. I think you had one made by another manufacturer, and then we sent you this. So, what was your impression of the machine overall? Very strong. I mean, it'll do practically anything you ask it to do. We took tires off the sprayer, take tires off the big trucks, stuff that you could have messed with for an hour in the old days, you can take it off. The one thing you'd mentioned about this, you were doing some construction where you were running lag bolts in. The problem is you were snapping off the lag bolts. Too much, yeah. Or even weaker bolts, you don't want to use it for that necessarily, or you have to watch what you're doing, right? You have to have more skill if you want to save everything, right? Because it'll okay. break anything smaller. It'll, three eighths bolts or half inch bolts, it'll break them. So they do make a battery now that has more amp hours, but the capacity of this thing is, it gives you quite a bit of work time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, for, I mean, hit and miss, it'll run, long time on the, just that battery there. Okay, and recharge time, I think these are 30 minutes, isn't it? So if I you have so. ran two batteries, you'd never be starved for power. You'd never be short. What I was impressed with is how you can feather the trigger and do a pretty light load on the whole thing. Right, and then it does have that high low speed Yeah. also. Oh, I forgot about that. That's the switch down here, isn't it? Yes, it, it gives you way less on low. So way less power or speed? Both. Oh, Both. okay. So if you're running a lighter load thing, then you may be on number one, as opposed to number two, which is if you're really wailing on something, mm -hmm. that would be right. That. So this thing retails, depending on if you get the tool alone, if you already had the battery and charger, or if you get the full kit, the tool alone is somewhere around 350 bucks. I think the kit gets it up to 450, maybe five. Well, for more information about this and other Milwaukee tools, you can go to the website at milwaukeetool.com. I'll see you on another product test team report. One of the tools that I wanted the farmer to test out was something that I was very familiar with, and that was a heat gun. I've used it before when I was working on my house. I used a heat gun, not unlike this, to take paint off of woodwork. And I always thought to myself, they're pretty handy things. Well, Wagner came out with their new line of Ferno heat guns. And I can tell you right now, this is about a third of the way to the one that I used, which was a heavy duty heat gun. I sent it off to Gerald Joseph in Hampton, Nebraska for him to test. Now, Gerald, to be fair, you had already used a heat gun before. Yes, I have. I had, I had a couple of them in my lifetime and they always seemed to disappear to my son's house. <laughs> so, but yeah, I had a, t a couple different brands and I used them, you know, Kind of regular, they don't use them every day, but when you need them, they, they are handy. Well, so my question to you is, would a heat gun have a place in the farm shop? Well, I think definitely they would. One thing that they work well for is taking stickers off. If you get, you, you get, you get parts now and they, the first thing they do is plaster a sticker right where you got to slide it on a shaft. Well, instead it, it, it works well to get those off and it loosens the glue and then you can take them off. So that seems like an underwhelming job for, cause this one goes up to 1300 degrees will come out of this thing. It does get hot. It does get hot. Yes. So what other jobs could you use it on a farm shop? Maybe well, loosening. Does it get hot enough to loosen bolts? Yeah, according to the according to the directions, they they give you settings on how to set them to loosen rusted bolts, which I hadn't tried yet. But I used it to bend um, PVC conduit. Oh, okay. The gray conduit to bend bend them into a 45 or right. whatever angle you need. It it heats it up 
fine and you can just bend them to any angle you want and right. it's r quite handy for that. By the way, the one thing that you pointed out when you were doing the conduit that you wanted to talk about that you liked so much was when you did that, you used the case. The case has a built-in feature that holds the gun sturdy and then in the back you can run your controls and see your digital and then you can work oh my gosh safely without oh. somebody hanging on to it that's and cool that's that's a that's pretty neat feature yeah i was going to say then it leaves you two hands that's so right. when you when you used it for the conduit you just put the conduit right. over here and then you could right. bend i it just turned it and got it got it so it was mushy and then bent it the way i wanted it and so if you had skiers with sirloin on it that would work quite well too that's not <laughs> yeah. a bad idea <laughs> So this whole set with all the deflectors and the tools come sells for $69.99, uh, let's say 70 bucks. Is that worth the price to have a heat gun like this around? I would say it would be. I mean, it, it has a lot of nice features. It comes with everything you need. And it's lightweight enough. It is lightweight. Well, for more information about the Fernal 750 and the other heat guns in the Fernal line, you can go to wagnerspraytech.com. Now, you can catch our other product test team reports, both in future episodes of the television show, as well as Successful Farming Magazine and agriculture.com. Hi there, I'm Jolene Brown, a professional speaker and family business consultant. Oh, and by the way, I am also a real Farmer Brown. As I've worked with so many in family business, this is what I know. Hire family members well because it is darn hard to fire them. I've learned that if you want to have a really successful business and a happy family, you've got to understand that being part of a family business is not a birthright. There is no entitlement. So. Before that next generation comes in or you hire new people, I think there are six prerequisite questions that they need to answer. What do you bring? You know, when you're applying for a job, you bring a resume and we get to know your education and your experience. We can sense your character and your qualifications. And what I know is maybe you're going to bring energy or capital or labor or mechanical skills or herdsmanship, but you gotta bring something if you're gonna get a paycheck. Now the second question is fun. Do we even need you? So the business has to take a look. If Would I have this job opening for anybody or am I just creating something because it's a family member? Do we really need to hire someone for this business? Now, one of the things I've learned is I believe it is not the seniors generation's job to make a family business big enough so anybody who wants to come back in gets to work in the family business. Oh no, no, I think those who are wanting into the business need to say something like this. You know, if I am fortunate enough to have the privilege to be invited to work for you, here's what I think the business might look like. And they bring a business plan, which includes what they're going to add, what the cost is going to be, and all the details along the way. Make sure that the business needs them. There must be a worthy job and a worthy applicant. Now, the third question is, what does it cost? Everybody comes with a handout. They want a paycheck, they want all these fringe benefits, and we have to make sure that the cost they're bringing in the business fits into the cash flow, not the net worth. And what's really important is that the cost to the business equals the value that they bring. Now, here's a real key one which we often ignore, and that is, have you worked for a non-family boss for at least two or three consecutive years? Yes, I know you came home every vacation and you worked on the farm and you might have interned someplace else, but I want you to have a non-family boss for at least two to three years and the lessons that you learn will bring so much value to you and to the business. Now, the last two questions are kind of fun. I always ask the next generation, are you still living at home? And the sixth question is, is your mother still doing your laundry? Now, the last two questions will tell me a little bit about your emotional intelligence. I don't want moms and dads hiring sons and daughters. I want really good leaders and managers hiring really good employees. And when you do that, you've done it right. I wish you a family business filled with productivity, profitability, and peace of mind. And you can do that when you've got the right people for the right job. You've hired them well. I hope to meet you at upcoming speaking events, but if I don't see you there, you can always go to my website, jolenebrown.com. You'll find a lot of resources because together we need to honor our families and do the business right. Join me at sale to see what high capacity Kinsey grain carts are selling for after these brief messages. Music
Today I'm at a huge consignment sale in South Dakota being conducted by Weeman Auction. While searching the row upon row upon row of equipment up for sale today, I came across this 2013 Kinsey grain cart. I decided to feature the sale of this grain cart as grain carts offer one of the best deals available in used equipment today. There is a healthy supply of both new and used models on the market. And one of the best times of the year to buy a grain cart is before or after planting. Later this summer, values on these carts will go up as farmers gear up for harvest. Now what we have here is a cart that holds 1,300 bushels, so it certainly could serve your needs if you're looking to increase field capacity. Plus this Model 1300 comes equipped with scales, tarp, high flotation tires, and joystick control for unloading. All those accessories will have an impact on the bidding value of today's cart. Now, to get a feel for what carts like this are worth, I'm gonna go talk to an expert at Weeman Auction about the Kinsey 1300 before it sells. So I'm talking with Kevin Weeman. We're looking at that Kinsey 1300 grain cart. And um, this past year, a little sloppy in the fields, but still that's a grain cart a lot of guys are looking at because you can fill that and in one dump fill a uh, semi with it. So there's gonna be some interest. Absolutely. But this is a winter sale. And is it a good time to buy a grain cart because the lower values it might bring as opposed to summer just before harvest? Well, I think all equipment's kind of timely with season. And if you're gonna buy it as you need it in season, you're always gonna pay more. So I think, you know, buying the equipment out of season is a great time. And there's some very good machinery deals right now. Yeah, but Kevin, you know, the, the marketplace is a little full of grain carts right now. There's a lot of new grain carts sitting in lots. There's a lot of late model used ones. Is that kind of putting a ceiling on these machines? Absolutely. The, the equipment market as a whole is, is, is kind of followed what the commodity markets have done. And, uh, you know, I don't know if there'll be a lot of uh, tax buying going on at the end of the year like there has in past years, but if you need something to make your operation flow better, get harvest done in a more timely manner, and it makes everyone's job and life a little easier, buying some equipment here today would be a good thing to do. And a grain cart would be of that size, 1,300 bushels would be a great addition to that. So if I'm looking at a grain cart like that, late model used like that, um, probably should give it a good inspection. Absolutely, especially coming out of a year that we've had here with all the rains in the Midwest. If it was used with all the mud and all the stress that was put on the, the pivot points and the stress points of the frame, I'd check it for cracks, check uh, the drivetrain on it, check for the unloading auger with the uneven ground if it had any dents in it that might affect the auger and the flighting. Um, just give it a good once over look at it. That's coming in, you don't know if it's from a farm or a dealer, that's where we start with you, right? We give right. you guys a call. We'll give you the previous owner on it. That one actually did come from a dealer okay. and uh, they brought it up here, they want to turn it to cash. They're just like no different than anybody else. They can't eat this stuff, so they want to turn it to cash and put it in their operation back. So if I were looking for a price range on it, do you have any feel for that? Well, we sold one just like it, exactly set up with it in August prior to harvest and that brought 41,000. So I'm guessing after harvest, you know, out of season, 35 on the bottom, 40 on the top. Well, let's go watch the Kinsey grain cart sale. Hey, 30, John, another bit 30, 30, I got 30, 35, now 40. Hey, 35, 40, man, man, 40, now 40, John, another 35, now 75. Now 7, hey, 37, John, another 36, 37, now 37, 8, now 9, 39. Hey, 37, 38, 38, John, another, I got 37 with you, 38. Now 9, 39,000, another, hey, 39, 40, hey, 40, John, another 39, now 40, now 1, man, man, 40, 41, 40, 41, 40, 5, now 1, hey, 41,000, another, hey, 40, John, 5, now 1, man, man, 41,000, another. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. Holy buckets, boys. You can put a filler up right there. Hey, 40,000 dollars. Hey, 41,000 dollars. I'm not 40,000 dollars, but I'm not 41,000. I'd hate to price them uptown at the dealer. 41,000. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. Hey, 40 ton find a woman, but I'm not 41,000. $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000, $41,000,
Sold out in the back, number two. So the final bid on our Kinsey 1300 was 40,500. For comparison, I investigated the prices on similar 2013 model year carts. Now remember, this unit sold with scales, roll tarp, high flotation tires, and joystick control. My search of 2013 models revealed 12 available carts on dealer's lots. Their asking prices range from $56,000 up to $65,900. Their average asking price, however, was $58,000. So if I were considering that Kinsey 1300, I would want to point out its value disparity to the dealer and get them to bring down the sale price. By the way, to help you put solid values on equipment, we are now offering the opportunity to get two free appraisals from the authority on equipment prices, and that would be Iron Solutions. Used by banks, manufacturers, and dealers from across North America, Iron Solutions gathers actual dealer sales, auction prices, and wholesale transactions on equipment built in the past 20 years. Iron Solutions is the place dealers go to set trade-in offers and sale prices. And you can get two free appraisals each month by going to agriculture.com slash what's it worth. Now, for more information about Weeman Auctions, go to their website at weemanauctions.com. I'll see you next week on another Steel Deals Report. After these messages, we feature a tiling machine any farmer can build, so please stay tuned. I'm James Nelson. I farm here in Audubon County in West Central Iowa. And this is the tiling equipment I made last winter to install my own drainage tile. I built the plow to be able to install four inch drainage tile up to four feet deep. And I had to build a stringer cart so I could unroll 3,000 foot rolls of tile. The main construction of the tile plow is uh, six by six by three eighths wall square box tubing and some of the supporting braces and things are quarter inch square box tubing and flat iron and um, the tile goes through the main part of the square box tubing on the shank and I used eighth inch by six rolled flat steel to guide the tile out and into the, the trench. I don't have any type of laser grade control or anything. Most of the tile I'm installing is on, on hillsides where there's natural slope. So I just need to maintain a constant depth. And if I maintain that depth, I'll have grade. So I have um, depth gauge chains hanging off the one side so I can just watch that from the tractor cab and adjust the angle of the shank to maintain uh, the desired depth. Over here I have the tile stringer cart and uh, I started with the frame of a fertilizer spreader and built off of that. The main pivot that the spool rotates on is half of a semi-trailer axle, so it's strong enough to support the weight. And it also has the brake drum and brake pads intact. And that's how I limit how fast the, the table turns is with a hydraulic cylinder hooked to an arm that actuates the, the semi-trailer brakes. I also added a basket on the front of the frame to hold all the tile fittings and tape and spades and shovels and probes and things like that that you need when you're tiling. To get a new tile spool onto the cart, the entire table tilts back 90 degrees and you back into the spool and then you lift it back up. And in order to do that, um, I needed the table to fold under so it wouldn't hit the ground while I was backing into a new spool. If someone wanted to build this equipment themselves, they would definitely have to have uh, the basic metal working skills as welding and torching and, um, and just general fabrication. Um, I did have to have the main pivot pin machined and I don't have a lathe, so that's one of the few things that I had to uh, hire done. For more about this idea and other farmer inventions, go to agriculture.com slash TV. Please join Natalina, Lori, and me next week for another show. In the meantime, be sure to visit the show's website at agriculture.com slash TV to 
get more information on this show and to view past episodes. See you next week on Successful Farming. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great episodes from Successful Farming Television.